All right, today we're gonna to look at triggering a scripted sequence with a trigger volume rather than just a logic auto like we've done. And um, th this would probably be the, the way that you would do most of these. Um, if you want sort of scripted sequences that the player you know, is walking through an environment and they're seeing people getting arrested and you know, events happening. So logic autos, I would probably use those if I were placing NPCs into positions at the start of the game. So if I wanted like some guys sitting and a couple guys talking and, you know, maybe a, a combine guy, you know, standing menacingly with his rifle or something like that, I would logic auto those to get them started. But any of the like, you know, sort of theatrical cinematic type events that you want to show the player, we would want them triggered by the player as the player comes into the area. Otherwise, if we use logic autos, all the animations will just run right at the beginning of the game and um, and you're not gonna get to see them. So so we're gonna look at how to do a, um, a triggered volume to get a, a sequence to start and then also some considerations we have to do to prevent like the combine from just killing everybody before we even get there, all right? So um, so let's take a look at this real quick. So I'm gonna reload my map. So what I've got here is I've, I've got um, the combine soldier and then I added just a regular civilian down at the end of the block here, at the end of the wall. And, um, and I disabled the AI relationship because I just wanted to show you what would happen um, and what the purpose of today's lesson is. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload this. So I turned off all the logic autos and you can see as soon as the map starts, this guy starts shooting, okay? So um, now I have an animation waiting for this guy, right? Um, he should be waving his arm and leaning against the wall and all that, but instead his, his normal AI is kind of overpowering him and he's doing what he's you know, trained to do, so he's shooting the civilians. So we'll go ahead and reload one more time and we'll watch again. Okay, so as soon as the map starts, he begins shooting. So let's go in and look at the editor and look at the setup I've got here. So I've got a trigger volume for me to walk through that's gonna start the animation. And you'll notice I took out all of the logic autos. So this animation sequence is no longer controlled by a logic auto. So it's not gonna start when the map starts. Instead, the player needs to walk through this trigger volume. Now, the trick to this is that I need to tell these guys to wait until it's time to, you know, until I, I fire the trigger. So let's look at this guy here. So on his flags, there is a check that says wait for script. So if I check that and apply it, Let's go back and see what happens to this guy because now I've told him to wait for a script. So he's kind of stuck into an idle position now. So let's go ahead and run this and see what change that makes. All right, so now I'm gonna back away because we know that my trigger volume is in this area here, okay? so. Here's this civilian, he's running all around in front of him. Now we know the AI relationship is turned off, right? Because in the all I did was change that wait for script. I didn't do anything else. So these guys, they're just stuck in an idle position. They're just relaxing. They're not doing anything weird. Now if I come back around and I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the trigger volume. And now the animation's gonna run. Now at the end of the animation, this guy gets released from the scripted sequence, which means his AI turns back on and he does that. He knocks out this guy too, I assume. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so he just took care of everybody. All right, so one more time, let's watch what happens. All right, so these guys are in what's a, like a sleep state. So they are, they are in a wait for script state. So it, the game just puts them into an idle state so if I wanted the player to be, you know, walking down a hallway and they come across this scene right here, 
I've got a trigger volume that the player is going to walk into, which triggers the animation. The player gets to watch the animation. And then at the end, once these guys get released, then they'll start doing what they're supposed to do. So, and you can see he immediately goes into his, you know, shooting everybody and throwing grenades and crap. All right, so let's go back and take a look at this again. So here's the change from the way we've done everything throughout this week. So all week we've been using Logic Autos to start our animation. Okay, so the Logic Autos, that's these things right here. All right, so the Logic Auto, we had them set to on map spawn, and then they would just fire off the, uh, you know, begin sequence and make these guys do all their stuff. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get rid of these. There was two of them. There was one for this guy and there was one for this guy. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of them. We don't need them because we're going to use our trigger instead. So what you're going to want to do is before you delete them, you're going to want to look at what they're doing. Okay. So open them up, double click them, look at their outputs, and you're going to want to see what the outputs are on these logic autos before you delete them. Okay. You might want to screenshot it. Or you can even copy and paste them to the trigger if you want. But, um, but make sure you look and see what your logic autos are doing before you delete them. All right? So we're going to take out the two logic autos. And we're going to replace them with a trigger volume. Okay, so here's my trigger volume. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take my block tool. I'm going to make a box. I'm going to browse, filter by trigger, create the box by pressing enter. Okay, so there's the box. And then you'll just shape it to whatever shape you want it to be, right? So this is the, the trigger that I want the player to walk through, okay? Once we've created it, you're going to right click on it, tie to entity. And we're going to make it a trigger once. Click apply. You can name it if you'd like to. You know, sequence one, start or something like that. Start disabled. Um, we'll say no for this. And then on the outputs for this trigger, you're actually going to put all of the outputs that start your animation. So let's go ahead and look at this one right here that I've created. So it's a trigger once. I didn't name it because I don't need to. Um, start disabled, no. So this is active at all times. Under my output, these are the three things that my logic autos used to do. So those little red logic autos, they used to be responsible for starting or begin sequence on both of my animation sequences. So. If you remember, there was two little red logic autos on here and they said on map spawn begin sequence. So they would start the animation. Well, instead I deleted the logic autos and I added this trigger volume here. Okay. And I did the right click tie to entity and I made it into a trigger once. And on the output tab, I simply copied the outputs from the logic autos. So now when the player walks into this trigger volume, it's going to start the Metro police sequence, which is this guy right here. He's going to run over and knock on a door and then go to idle. It's also going to begin the sequence for the soldier who's going to wave his arm and then lean against the wall. And then it's also going to cancel the sequence for the soldier after eight seconds so that, you know, he'll go about his business after that. Fire once, apply, close. So all we're doing is we're replacing the logic autos with a trigger volume. In order to get our actors to stay where they're supposed to be and not wander off, we want to check the box that says wait for script. And we're going to do that on all of the actors who are involved in this cutscene or whatever you want to consider it, your little theatrical scene. Okay, wait for script. All right, so one more time, we'll go ahead and run this. Right, 
reload. All right, so there's those two guys right there. They are waiting for script. You can see they're just in an idle. They're kind of just chilling, not doing anything. They don't care that this guy's here. But as soon as I hit the trigger, they run their animations and then watch this guy. As soon as his animations are done, he's going to get released back to his regular AI and he's, he's really angry at that guy right there. He's, he's angry at everybody. Okay. All right. So check in the team's assignment today and it'll tell you what we're doing. And that is basically setting up an animation off of a trigger rather than just using a logic auto, which is sort of, um, you know, the less useful way to do it.